especially in the case of uh, market pricing in maybe to the dot, the demonetization impact, and actually the numbers turning out to be not that bad. Uh, that clearly is playing out. HDFC Bank Management getting ready to speak any time. Uh, before we go to uh, Parish Suktankar, uh, 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 Mitesh, any call on HDFC Bank? Yeah, in fact, I do like it. I've recommended it uh, to our clients, keeping the stock below 1249 if somebody wants to take a positional call. I think this is a buy for targets close to about uh, 1310 on the upside. So, uh, for this quarter, our net revenues were at 11,451.8 crores. Those were up 15.2% on over the corresponding quarter of last year. Net interest income, which accounts for about 73% of the uh, net revenues, grew by 17.6%, and those therefore touched 8,309 crores. The NII growth was on the back of average uh, asset growth and then the margin, which was at 4.1%. Uh, that was down from 4.2% uh, in the corresponding quarter of last year and the preceding quarter. Other income, which formed 27.4% of net revenues, uh, grew by 9.4% to touch 3,142 crores. Um, so between that, we delivered on our 15% net revenue growth. Uh, commissions, which account for about 70% of those net revenues, were up 10.1%. Operating expenses for the quarter were at 4,842 crores and those also grew at 15.2 percent and uh, therefore the core cost to income ratio was more or less stable. It was at 43.8 percent as against 43.7 percent in the corresponding quarter of last year. Total provisions were at 715.8 crores, uh, profit before tax at 5,893 crores was up 16%. Post tax, uh, the tax rate was slightly higher. Uh, therefore, net profit growth was at 15.1%, and the net profit for the quarter was at 3,865 crores. Moving on to uh, just a couple of numbers on the nine months. Therefore, as year to date, uh, December, uh, the net profit at 10,559 crores was up. 18.4% uh, over the corresponding nine months of uh, last year. Balance sheet uh, numbers, uh, well our total balance sheet size touched 8,28,000 crores uh, as against just under 7,6,99,800 crores as of December of 2015, so that's up about 18%. Our total deposits were at 6,34,705 crores and uh, that's an increase of 21% over December last year. Mind you, this, as you know, is a uh, net of the FCNR uh, deposits which uh, ran off during this quarter. This goes back to the uh, FCNR deposits which had been contracted three years back and which were swapped with the RBI to, uh, at a concession rate at that point of time. So all of those mature, I mean, most of those pretty much matured during this quarter, and uh, therefore, uh, this this deposit growth is net of roughly three billion dollars of runoff in the FCNR deposits. Uh, the CASA deposit growth uh, obviously saw a spurt relating to the demonetization exercise, and those uh, the total uh, well, CASA deposits overall grew at about 37 percent. The current accounts grew at 36.7 percent. Those touched one lakh one thousand crores. Savings accounts deposits grew by 37.8 percent and those touched 1,86,000 crores. So uh, clearly, uh, overall CASA growth was, was strong. The CASA proportion uh, as, of, uh, as of December of 2016 was about 45% uh, as against roughly 40% in the preceding quarter. Obviously, uh, part of that had to do with the uh, FCNR, which is the fixed deposit running off, and part of it was the higher CASA growth linked uh, clearly in part to the demonetization excess. Moving on to the loan side, uh, again, total loans were uh, at 4,95,000 crores. Uh, again, this included a roughly $2 billion uh, runoff on account of loans that had been granted in our overseas books uh, linked to the FCNR uh, flows which came in. 
So if you really focus on the domestic, domestic loans, because that's the part which actually reflects the underlying momentum, then uh, the domestic loan portfolio grew by 17.5% uh, and touched 4,77,000 crores. Um, both deposit and loan growth you know, compare uh, very favorably with what the system has done. Uh, I think system loan growth was at about 4.7%. Uh, uh, so our 17.5% does compare very favorably with that. And I think deposit growth for the system was around 14 and 15%, again, significantly outpaced that. Um, our, our total distribution network as of December was 4,555 branches and 12,087 ATMs. These are across 2,597 cities. And 52% of these uh, branches are uh, in semi-urban and rural areas. Finally, on the asset quality front, gross NPAs were at 1.05%, net NPAs at 0.3%, and uh, capital adequacy uh, was at 15.9%, tier 1 was at 13.8%. So I think those are some of the key financial numbers. Uh, we have to take yes. your questions. Sakar, first, on your advances, uh, could you tell us the quarterly growth on domestic advances, what it was, and where it came from? Um, also, CV, et cetera, the segments, uh, especially the rural economy, have you seen any hit on account of demonetization or to say its numbers is especially doing bad? Well, uh, the overall growth rate, as you can see, uh, you know, on the domestic uh, advance, if you look at that 17 and a half, it's uh, come about uh, from about 17.8% in retail and about 168 from wholesale. So there's not much of a difference between the two uh, segments uh, in terms of growth. Uh, each of these segments would have had a bit of an impact for the quarter because uh, one is linked to what loans got repaid in terms of some cash credit or uh, overdraft facilities because customers you know, deposited uh, some amount of currency into their uh, and reduced their borrowings. So that did take off a few thousand crores on, the, uh, on some of the business banking and some of the SME books. So that would have uh, had uh, some impact. And then uh, on the retail side where the underlying businesses uh, in terms of, say, sales of two-wheelers or used, uh, used uh, cars or some part of CV, wherever demand in the underlying products was uh, impacted, naturally there was some moderation in, uh, in the demand for loans and therefore loan growth. Having said that, I think, uh, you know, clearly as we sort of exit December and as we come into this quarter, uh, you know, we hope to see a greater normalization in that. Um, what is the sequential growth in advances? Sequential growth in advances was... Uh, 2.7. I think it was roughly 3%, if I'm not mistaken, but I'll give you the exact. And uh, CV, if you could highlight a little more in terms of numbers, I can show Well, uh, specifically on CVs, our growth uh, for the quarter uh, was a sequential growth of about 2.9%, and uh, that makes it a year on year growth of about 16%. Uh, in the previous quarter, if you could highlight what the previous quarter. I don't really have the previous uh, quarter's growth on a sequential basis. You know, your profit figures uh, are below 20% for the first time. Of course, it has a lot to do sure. with the FT and RB deposits. Uh, but do you see, do you think closing the year, would you return to those kind of numbers? Is it just a one-time hit? Or so would the impact of demonetization for increase last longer? We, we don't... Uh, you know, have a guidance on any numbers. We haven't had it for a long time, or ever, in fact. Uh, but uh, yeah, I think the the numbers in terms of absolute growth do reflect uh, the reality in terms of the marketplace. Uh, as I said, we have always said that we would grow at a certain pace, which is ahead of the system, and that uh, we have traditionally outpaced the system by maybe four, five, six, seven percent. If anything, during this quarter, if you look at the rate at which we've grown our both our loans and our deposits, we've continued to outpace the system, perhaps in this quarter, by about 9 or 10 percent. And uh, margins have remained within the range of you know 4 to 4.3 that we have said. They have been at 4.1. So I think the underlying business momentum in terms of uh, our own businesses, uh, I think those uh, you know that sort of momentum still remains fairly healthy. Clearly. Uh, you know, we will be impacted or we will move with what happens to the system, but we don't really have a number 
to guide you uh, either for uh, this quarter or for the full year. Okay. Uh, 